We shall commence this module by discussing about Ricardian and HO theory. The Ricardian theory and the HO theory provided good explanation of trade theory till the half of 20th century. However, with time, it was observed that comparative advantage seemed to be less important in the modern world. The traditional trade theories failed to provide the complete explanation of the structure of the world. Swedish economist Stefan Bustam Linder proposed the preference similarity hypothesis in 1961 to describe the pattern of international trade. This theory is different from the HO model because it is exclusively demand oriented whereas HO is primarily supply oriented as it focused on factor endowments and factor intensities. This theory was given a possible resolution to Leontief paradox which questioned empirical validity of heckscher oling theory. HO and other theories of factor endowment based trade had dominated the field of international economics until Leontief performed a study empirically rejecting HO theory. Linder proposed an alternative theory which was consistent with Leontief's finding. After studying this module, you shall be able to understand the concept of Linder hypothesis in international trade, importance of Linder hypothesis, relation between Linder hypothesis and international investment. Let us discuss about preference similarity hypothesis. Linder gave importance to the demand side factors like similarity in income levels across nations and income distribution characteristics in determining pattern of trade. As per this theory, international trade takes place between those countries which have similar levels and demand patterns. Stephen Linder gave the two explanations of the world trade pattern, one for the manufactured goods and the other for the primary goods, mainly agriculture. The trade in primary products and agriculture goods confirm well to the factor endowment theory. Linder, whereas proposed the trade in manufactured goods was primarily determined by domestic demand conditions. A country will export products for which there is large and active domestic market to realize the scale economies. So the lower cost will help to penetrate the foreign markets. Linda explained that tastes of consumers are conditioned strongly by their income levels. Thus, a country's per capita income will yield particular patterns of taste Nation with high per capita income will demand high quality manufactured goods like luxuries whereas nations with low per capita income will demand lower quality goods like necessities. So high income countries will trade with other high income countries as there is a great possibilities of overlapping demands. Similarly, low income countries will trade with other low income countries as there is again the probability of overlapping demand. Linder's hypothesis is therefore referred to as the preference similarity hypothesis or the theory of overlapping demand. Linder's theory of overlapping demand is the first hypothesis explaining the existence of intra-industry trade between the countries. According to Linder, the existence of intra-industry trade is caused by different consumer preferences. The more suitable demand structure of the country, the more they will trade with one another. Moving on to discuss the explanation of preference similarity hypothesis, the income of the nation is measured along the horizontal axis Demand and production of nation is measured along the vertical axis. The level of per capita income in nation 1 
yields a demand for good A, B, C, D and E. Nation 2 with higher per capita income yields a demand for goods C, D, E, F and G. Suppose that nation 1 has a per capita income level that yields demand for the goods A, B, C, D and E. Goods from A to E are arranged in ascending order. That is, good A and B being low quality goods, whereas their quality improves as the consumer moves to C, D and E. Now, if nation 2 has higher per capita income and will demand and therefore produce C, D and E and even more quality goods like F and G, nation 1 with low income cannot produce F and G as they are not demanded by the consumers. Each nation is therefore producing goods that cater to the demands and taste of its own citizens. With the above pattern of production, the two countries will trade in goods that have an overlapping demand. That is, the consumer in both the nations are demanding the particular items. The goods C, D and E will be traded between nation 1 and nation 2. This sort of overlapping demand can lead to intra-industry trade. According to Lindo hypothesis, there will be an interest in trade only when the product demands are similar or overlap. So nation 1 and nation 2 will trade C, D and E goods with each other. Next, we will understand the Linder Hypothesis and International Investment. In the world economy, the pattern of foreign direct investment that is FDI is significant. The pattern of FDI depends on various variables. The joint patterns of trade and FDI were taken in several studies where the countries differ in income distribution and size. The results showed that international investment is more likely to have between similar countries with similar income levels. The pattern of trade was explained by Linder hypothesis. He concluded that the strong demand for domestic goods induced investment and hence gave rise to exports. The countries will trade intensively with others that share similar consumption patterns. Due to increasing returns to scale and a high income elasticity of demand for the capital intensive good, the rich capital abundant nation trade intensively among themselves. In 2001, the study by Bills and Leno showed a strong correlation between household income and the average price paid by the household for the good. The countries with high income demand higher quality goods and also specialize in their production. Linda hypothesis advocated that market size will vary with per capita income and product quality. These factors affect the foreign investment pattern. Due to the presence of trading cost, firms are likely to serve the foreign market with local production facilities and so it was considered important to understand global patterns of international investment. The preferences of consumers to opt for high quality varieties rise with the income levels. Even with countries equal in size but with different distribution of income, the aggregate demand for high quality goods will be greater in the market by the high income consumers. The main motive to serve the foreign market was either through exports or subsidiary sales. So the circumstances under which the firms in a country will choose to serve the foreign market by exports or through subsidiary sales was studied. It was found that firms may serve destinations that have similar demand composition from the home market through the foreign direct investment and the destinations that have different demand composition from the home market can be met by export sales. 
So international investment turns out to be more likely across similar income nations as these nations specialize in similar quality products. Natalia Romando studied the data related to FTI for the period from 1990 to 2002 and the conclusion was drawn about the pattern of FDI and the subsidiary sales. He found that the firms are more likely to serve the foreign markets that have similar per capita income to their home market through FDIs compared to the markets that have very different levels of per capita income. Pavlon Fudge Jalbaum studied the international investment by taking four countries in the world and divided them as two in the north and two in the south. The north countries have high per capita income than the southern countries. The pattern of trade and FDI were linked to cost parameters, income distribution and population size. It was found that the firm must locate foreign subsidiaries in markets that are similar to their home market. Moreover, the smaller asymmetries in the market size within the region are more conducive to regional FDI. The part of the recent growth in South to South FDI was due to convergence of China and India towards income levels of their emerging countries. Now we will discuss the empirical testing of Linder hypothesis. Linder hypothesis states that the overlapping of production and demand patterns between countries of similar income per capita induce them to trade more intensely with one another. The ample evidence supported that the quality of goods that the countries produce and consume varies systematically with their income levels. On the production side, the export prices are strongly correlated with countries per capita income and having a positive relationship between per capita income and quality production. On the consumption side, household data shows that there is a strong correlation between quality demand and household income which implies that high income countries consume larger portion of high quality goods. The Linder hypothesis attracted the attention of researchers due to its contrast with the result of heckscher olin theory where more intense trade is there between countries of dissimilar income per capita. Brooks and Verhoeven in 2006 conducted the study in US imports from Colombia and firm level exports from Mexico and found the positive relationship between countries per capita income and quality consumption. An empirical analysis of Linder theory was done by Bukhari, Ahmed, Alam, Bukhari and Butt, who conducted that the theory supports the trade for three South Asian countries that is Bangladesh, India and Pakistan. The research indicated that these countries trade more intensively with economies that have per capita income levels similar to their own levels. Some theories failed to provide consistent support to the Linder hypothesis. According to Diodorf, Lehmer and Levin-Sohan, the Linder hypothesis failed to provide the consistent support of its empirical validity. The failure is due to an unanimous use of misspecified empirical benchmark. The result only supported the hypothesis when it was formulated at sector level where the sample of 64 countries were taken. Let us now summarize what we have discussed in this module. Linder theory was applicable only to trade in differentiated manufactured goods in which consumers taste and scale economies were important. According to him, the trade in raw material or agriculture products can be explained by the traditional theories of trade with its emphasis on the supply of productive factors such as climate and natural resources. 
Linda, in his theory, gave importance to demand-side factors like similarity in income levels across nations and income distribution characteristics in determining pattern of trade. The joint patterns of trade and FTI were taken where the countries differ in income distribution and size. The result showed that international investment is more likely to have between similar countries with similar income levels.